Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes after 11 o'clock. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this segment of the morning because Bernie De Castro is our guest right now. And as you know, Bernie De Castro is the Constitution Party candidate to be the next Mary, uh, next count sheriff of Marion County. When Bernie, uh, well, when, whenever there's a third party candidate, as they say, involved in a race, it always becomes an interesting race. Uh, the Constitution Party has um, made this a real interesting race, especially by offering Bernie De Castro as a candidate. And uh, boy, in the beginning, Bernie, when I first said this is the most interesting race in this county, I had no clue what was about to unfold. Good boy, uh, good morning, Bernie. How you doing? I'm great, Larry. How are you? Holy <laughs> mackerel! I'm telling you. <laughs> well, anyway, this has been some t- uh, roller coaster ride in this sheriff's race. Yes, it has. And uh, we need to set some the record straight on a few things. Cause yes, we do. Facebook has become this rumor mill of a lot of junk. Right. Right. So right. that's part of why you're here. Right. And I don't want to take you anywhere you don't want to go. So. Yeah. Um, so I'll let you start. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Larry. Um, well, first of all, there have been a lot of uh, false accusations uh, on Ocala.com and some of the other bl- uh, blogs, so I thought I'd set the record straight this morning. My crimes were breaking and entering, uh, sales and possession of drugs, and in 1976 I was tried, convicted, and sentenced for a drug-related armed robbery and given a life and 30-year sentence. Um, thankfully, no one was injured and uh, did eight and a half years for that crime. In 1981, I was, uh, while I was in prison, I surrendered my broken down life to the Lord Jesus Christ and he began to transform my life. Wow. Uh, in, a, in 1984, the Florida Parole Board gave me a parole and 10 years later, uh, Democratic Governor Lawton Childs gave me a full unconditional pardon and uh, restored all of my rights. Um, and then in 1987, a few years later, I founded Time for Freedom, Inc., a nonprofit faith-based criminal justice reentry organization uh, to help men and women to break free from the cycle of addiction, crime, and incarceration. Uh, for the last seven and a half years, I've been uh, the CEO slash warden of a 132-bed private work release center under contract with the Florida Department of Corrections. Um, We've had almost a 1,000 men graduate our program and return to the communities. Most of them are now productive, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens. And um, the one thing I don't want people to think is that I'm soft on crime, Larry. Um, uh, I've had to send a number of men back to prison for violating the rules. I don't, right, right. I don't, don't play around. Right. You know. Do you, do you make the rules of the facility? Well, uh, no. There, well, some of them we do, but most of them are uh, dictated to us by the Department of Corrections. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. And um, and as sheriff, I want uh, everyone listening to know that I will apply the same successful reentry principles to those men and women in the county jail who are what I call low-level, nonviolent, most of all substance abusers, uh, thereby stopping the cycle of recidivism and reducing the budget of the county jail at the same time. Okay, now now the the key to you turning around in your personal life was Jesus. I mean, you just said so. Is that... And if I'm going in territory you don't want me to go, I mean, this is your your time. I mean, is that part of what you think brings everybody um, around, for lack of a better way to ask that? Well, let me put it to you this way. Uh, 80, 90, um, you know, I've been, I've, been, uh, I've been a believer now for over 30 years, and I have worked with a lot of men and a lot of women caught up, and young people that are what we call at-risk youth. So I've I've worked with lots and lots of people, and I can tell you, I've never seen anything that changes a person's life like a, a commitment, a serious, heartfelt commitment to the Lord. Okay, I, I've never seen anything. serious and heartfelt is yes. the key right there. Yes. You, when when people say that you don't have any experience because you've not been in law right. enforcement before, it sounds like what you're talking about with the rehabilitation facility that you have a lot of experience with. The, ultimately, what your job would be as sheriff. Exactly. Well, uh, half of uh, the the uh, budget of the Marion County Sheriff's Office is uh, the county jail. Almost half. It's uh, 
close to thirty million dollars just to run the jail, right? And right. the the entire budget is sixty six point eight million dollars. So yes, it, corrections is a major part of it. Okay, so I, I and I don't want to spend too much time on the falsehoods that are being spread right. on, on Facebook. But did we cover them? I mean, you've yes. you've uh, yes. you've, you've been accused of things that haven't been true, and you exactly. kind of laid that down. Exactly. Um, when you decided to run for the sheriff's office, you had a, in a previous interview that you did with us, you yes. told us that you probably wouldn't have thrown your name into the hat, except for that you noticed some things. Can, yes. you, can you just reiterate what you told us once before about that? Well. Um, because I'm a strong constitutionalist, uh, I'm not what you would call an establishment candidate. Uh, and that's why I'm running on the Constitution Party. I'm a strong constitutionalist, believe that if we stick to the Constitution and if we stick to the Word of God, uh, this country would turn itself around in no time. And what I noticed was is that, uh, that there were a lot of uh, uh, federal overreach in this country all over, everywhere uh, I looked, uh, I, I did spent several years just studying this, uh, and I realized that it was coming to Marion County. It, it's it's everywhere. It's in uh, the northwest corner. It's in uh, Indiana. It's in uh, Nevada. It's in Arizona. We've heard of Fast and Furious. I mean, I could just spend right. all day right, talking right, about right. those things. And I realized that uh, it's, if you don't have a constitutional sheriff, they will not stand up against a, a rogue federal agency and protect the rights, of the, the, the uh, liberties and the rights of the citizens. And, and give me an example where that might come into play. Well, one example was in, um, in uh, Nye County, Nevada, where uh, Sheriff Tony DeMeo uh, the Bureau of Land Management was coming in and actually stealing people's property and their livestock and un under some false pretense of some kind of water rights. And he he went right... <laughs> to, he, yeah, it was crazy. And he went to the feds and told them to stop, and the Bureau of Land Management, the BLM, they told him to stand down. Now, at that point, you know, there was a real... That's a serious predicament there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of sheriffs, most sheriffs would have stood down Sheriff DeMeo didn't. He, because they look at them as higher ranking. Right. Yeah, right, right. But when you know the Constitution. That's right. And you know that you're the highest uh, executive officer, constitutional officer in your county, and you know where, what authority you have, uh, then you can stand up and say, no, I'm not, you, I'm not standing down. You're standing down, and you're getting out of my county, which is exactly what he told them. And they told him that if he didn't stand down, they would bring the SWAT team in and threaten the sheriff of Nye County, Nevada. And thankfully, thank God, he was a constitutional sheriff. He told them, you bring your SWAT team and I'll bring mine, and we'll just see what happens. And they left town quick, fast, and in a hurry. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, Bernie DeCastro is my guest right now, and uh, of course you all know he's running for sheriff. And this is actually a paid segment. Yes. This is an interesting phenomenon right now because you don't have any opponents who would pay right now because they're all... No, nobody's a candidate right now. Right. So that's going to be changing tomorrow. Yes, it is. Address what's happened in the past okay. couple of weeks and, and what's happening with the Executive Committee of the Republican. I'd be glad to, Larry. First of all, let me say that, uh, you know, this is a real tragedy, and most of our hearts go out to, I know mine does, and my my team, whenever we get together, we pray for the families, and we, uh, it's the, the children. I have five children of my own. I can't imagine them going through something like this. It just, uh, they're the innocent bystanders, the children, the spouses, and uh, so it's a tragedy that that's happening, and we feel real bad about that. On the other hand, however, some very positive things are coming out of this. The level of corruption at the Marion County Sheriff's Office uh, would not have been come to the surface had this not happened. And it needed to come to the surface, and it needs a thorough, thorough cleaning in that uh, agency. And that's what I intend to do. And uh, so that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it, which I think is uh, very interesting, and a lot of the citizens don't know this, the REC is going to try to uh, steal a number of votes from the citizens of Marion County. I say that, I, I choose that word very carefully. The reason I say steal is because there is no statutory authority for them to take a vote I cast for someone and give it to someone else. They have no... Oh, really? Exactly. And that's right from the supervisor of elections. 
So when the ballot says Dan Kuhn's name, yes. if you're voting for Dan Kuhn, by constitution, you should be voting for Dan Kuhn. Right, exactly. And especially those absentee ballots that are already come back in. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know? No and question I, about I tell you what, uh, I'll, if they did it to me, they would be, they'd have a lawsuit on their hands. And I'm sure, before this is all over with, that somebody's going to get sued on this, this whole deal. Because they're taking a lot of people's votes... And giving them away. They're, that's voter fraud. That's voter theft. That's voter disenfranchisement. That's a violation of federal law. You have taken your uh, candidacy and raised it to the level of awareness in a way that I've never seen a third party candidate do. And I might, there might be a few exceptions. Well, I guess Ross Perot would be an exception. Right. Um, and because of that, I said this even before this whole thing happened with the, the mistress and all that. I said, you know, you've already earned enough votes. You could win. It could be, yes. And even though you have your naysayers, yes. it, it could be that. And I just felt bad for you that people were saying, if you win, it's because of this. I don't think yeah, so. I no. think you would have won if you win. I think right. it's the same people voting for you, yes. supporting you. That and the phones here are an indic. If they are an indication. You've got a lot of support. Well, thank you, Larry. And uh, uh, I've had a lot of people tell me, uh, everywhere I go, I've had people tell me, uh, I'm voting for you. And uh, it's really, uh, it's, uh, you know, because a guy like me that's, that's been where I've been and had, had, have, not, has, have not always followed the rules, when people tell you that, it's, I'm honored. I just can't tell you how honored I am. And I've even had law enforcement people tell me. And that's really, that really is a thrill for me and so I, I just thank God that uh, that that people uh, because there's so many people out there that are just and, and, and I, I don't I think they're a small minority uh, and and you know they maybe they their intentions are good I don't know I'm not I'm not going to judge anybody's heart but you know what you but I think before you call somebody a murderer like they've called do, yeah, do a yeah, little research, right, for God's right, sake, right. at least, you know. Well, and, and to your credit, I mean, all of your past is has been something you put forward on your own. It's on your website. Yes, yes. So you made sure that we knew that up front so yes. that nobody could pull it out of the hat and suddenly you're... Well, when I first moved to Marion County uh, 28 years ago... Um, I've spoken in almost every church in Marion County and probably every civic club in Marion County and, and shared my testimony because, you know, as Christians, we're supposed to share our testimony. So I'm not proud of my past and what I did as a wayward young man, but, uh, you know, I'm proud of what God has done in my life. Well, and that's, that's a promise for everybody. Yes, that's, it is. Uh, that's something available to all of us. And that's you right. are the example of how God can... Uh, pardon you, just as the governors have pardoned you. you have yes. two. You have two pardons. Or uh, one. A uh, one. One pardon. Okay. Yes. But two endorsements from governors. Yes. Right? Uh, yes. Governor Jeb Bush uh, uh, had strongly endorsed me. Not for this race, but uh, when, when just uh, we became friends, and he said I was one of his heroes, and appointed me to a number of task forces. Yeah. Yeah. Things well, like you know, that. I I spent a little time working for the state at the juvenile level, and right. I, I would sit in those little cells over at the detention center, right. and I would tell those young boys, young men, yes. I would tell them, you know, this is the point where you make a decision. Right. You know, you're either going to go to the left or to the right. I don't mean that politically speaking, but, <laughs> but I mean, you're either going to uh, figure out how to do it the way you don't get in trouble, right. or the way, you know, and it is often um, a faith in God that makes that difference for them. Well, you know, and, and some people will say, I've heard this, and I'm sure you have too, say, well, that's foxhole religion or jailhouse religion. Yes, you right, know? right. But, you know, uh, sometimes it takes us coming to the end of ourselves before we realize that our lives are a broken down mess and that we need divine help. And uh, if it takes going to jail, I've told people this a lot of times, if it took my going to prison for me to personally know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, it was worth the trip. Well, God will forgive you way before people will. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> and, so that, and that's what you're up against. Cause yes, it is. God doesn't cast votes, although I'm not so sure he doesn't kick people out of the race. Well, I'll tell you what. There, uh, uh, you know, I tell people the, the reason Bernie DeCastro is a success today is, first of all, because of the finished work of the cross of Christ in my life, and secondly, because of the great, great, wonderful people in Marion County that helped me. I mean, I, I could sit here for a month and not name all all the people that helped Bernie DeCastro, because uh, I mean, I didn't know I didn't know how to live as a citizen.
citizen out here uh, 28 years ago. I had to learn everything from scratch. And uh, a lot of people came up to me and said, you know, were willing to help me and show me the love of Christ. Let me ask you some of the things specifically about the job that you're okay. that you're applying for the, right. the job of sheriff. Um, you you I think you've illustrated pretty well that you would know how to handle the jail part of your job. Yes. What about the street part? Is there anything that you would do differently than is being done currently for our safety? For you know, uh, I don't know our safety. I'll just end it with that. Yes, uh, I I definitely would. First thing I'd want to do is get in there. And uh, and straighten out the mess that's there, and that's going to take a while. And I'd like to mention, uh, uh, as an aside to, to this, that um, I know you've heard of Sheriff Richard Mack. We had him on yeah. the phone here one right, time. Right. The most respected sheriff in America, who defeated the Brady Bill in the U.S. Supreme Court in 1997. Uh, I've been talking with Sheriff Mack, and he told me that uh, if I win the race, there's a good chance that he will come to Florida. And uh, he would like to go to work for the sheriff's department here. And I'll tell you what, if we get Sheriff Richard Mack here, uh, we will be very, very blessed. And so the first thing I would do is begin to, to concentrate on getting the sheriff's department reorganized and, and getting everything straightened out. And I've talked to a, a few other uh, men who've worked in the sheriff's office who I believe are good men. And they have told me, I will help you. And so that's the first thing I would do. Then I'd begin to look at uh, what needs to be changed. The first thing I would do is implement a class in the Constitution and require everyone to take it because uh, it is, it's imperative that, we, that everyone that raises their hands and swears before Almighty God that they're going to uphold, support, and defend the Constitution of the United States. How can you swear to do something that you don't know what you're swearing there to? There you go. I've said that about every elected official. Exactly. Yeah. And so we would do that, and then we would begin to look at, uh, like, for example, how to reduce the response time. Okay. Uh, right now, I think response time to 911 calls is about 11 minutes plus. We'd look to see how we can reduce that. But the other thing I would do, uh, you know, public safety is, is a whole different issue, uh, Larry. You know, we uh, everything is sold to us under the guise wrapped in the cloak of public safety. The truth of the matter is yeah, yeah. 250 deputies cannot keep 340,000-plus people safe. All right? It's just not going to happen. And the courts have said over and over again that the law enforcement are not liable in court for not keeping people safe. All right? So the it's really the individual's responsibility to keep themselves safe. And instead of doing like the Ocala Police Department did here about a month ago and doing a gun buyback, I would be offering courses to the public, first of all, educating them that it is their responsibility to protect themselves and their families, and then we would hold classes three or four times a year, bring the public in, right. and teach them different methods of protecting themselves, whether it's with a gun, a stun gun, a mace, or whatever it is, whatever suits your fancy, and start pro uh, teaching people how to protect yourself in a given situation. You pick up the phone to call 911, 11 minutes is a long time, and a lot can happen in 11 minutes. You know, one, one of the things I've said all the time, Bernie, is there was not one gun fired on 9-11. Too bad. Yeah. Because yeah. one gun in one of those planes might have That's prevented that, right? exactly right. Do you know what I, is kind of the, more of a, a low-level complaint I've had? But I lived on the line between Bellevue and Marion County. Right. And, I, and a dog got run over in my street. And I called 911. Yeah. And I got a, apparently the wrong agency. And they said, well, you got to call the other agency. My, my thinking is, couldn't we just have, just call one time. One time. Exactly. And get to the right person. Right. And, oh, sorry, so yeah, just, and I agree with you on that. It's a exactly. smaller, smaller issue, but. Yeah. I, I'd like to make another point. Um, you know, uh, all through the uh, my candidacy, um, I've proclaimed that I'm a constitutional sheriff as opposed to an establishment sheriff, a lot of people don't understand the difference. The analogy that I would use would be, we've all heard of the tragedy in Penn State with Jerry Sandusky and all yeah. that. Today's his day, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And here you have a, a tragedy of major proportions, and everyone knew. Paterno knew, everyone knew. Right. They probably knew higher than Paterno. Right, right. And they kept it quiet. Why did they do that? To protect the establishment. So the establishment was more important than protecting the little boys that were being sexually abused. Good point, yeah. You see, and, and as a constitutional sheriff, your only allegiance 
is to the Constitution and to the people. It's not to a political party. It's not to the sheriff's office. It's not to the establishment. It's to the Constitution. And when, when you uphold the Constitution, everything works right. It's worked really great for the greatest nation in the face of the earth ever has been because of, number one, because God's favor on this nation, and number two, because of his favor on our founding fathers who drafted that wonderful uh, document we know as the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence. Do, do you have, thank you, I can hear people applauding out there right now. <laughs> do, do you um, have a, a way to kind of counter some of the negative things that people are posting? In other words, do you have a uh, a, a group of people who are keeping an eye on Facebook and and kind of saying, no, that's not true, and here's right. the truth. Yeah, we do have friends that are out there. I've lo- looked at some of the blogs, and I've seen some of my friends, like that one woman who said that I was a murderer. They said, well, who did he murder? Yeah, you know, and things yeah. like that. And uh, just trying to keep the record straight. Of course, she never posted back after that, you know. I guess she'd done her deed and uh, just moved on, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yes, we do have friends. And, and, wh- and what do you feel about the press coverage? Right? There was a sh- story um, out of Gainesville. This is after the primaries. Right. I don't know if you saw this, mm-hmm. but the story said uh, a small, because they were, the story was really about the small number of people who showed up to vote. Right. And they were basically saying that a small number of people elected a man to be the next sheriff of Marion County. Right. And then they, in parentheses, said, sorry, Bernie DeCastro. In other right. words, they were just discounting right. you. Oh, I know. They ran an opinion uh, piece in the uh, Star Banner the other day. They said I was uh, the most unpalatable candidate for sh- sheriff they're they're doing the media is doing everything that? they can excuse who, me who wrote that the, uh it, it was no there was no uh, signature on it it was uh. an opinion piece and nobody signed it uh. but the media is doing everything to marginalize me and it's like uh, anytime they talk about me the only they don't talk about the 28 years that i've lived here and the good that i've done in 28 years they never say anything about that it's always the ex-felon or the the guy who did 18 years right. or this right. that and the other and uh, you're about the only guy that I get a fair shake from, and that's the honest to God truth. And so it's uh, and so I would hope that the the listing public. I, I mean, I know that they're smarter than that. I know there's some people that will be swayed by that, but most people, if they stop and think for a minute, they'll go, you know, yeah, the guy the guy messed up, but. You know, look what he's done since everybody he's lived in this community. Up. Sure, everybody does. That's, That's what the Bible says, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, there's one other thing that I, I don't want to be remiss and, and not mention, that uh, I was just with a pastor in Summerfield in an uh, open-door community church, and there's a lot more than what we're hearing about with this uh, Dan Kuhn affair. Uh, this pastor told me that the Marion County Sheriff's Office came into his church and kidnapped his five-year-old grandson, I mean, this is on public record now, and they're filing a lawsuit against the sheriff's office. Man. Kid, this happened back in 2010, I believe it was March. Wow. Uh, the officer's name was Diaz, Miriam Diaz, kidnapped this kid, took him without the parents' permission or the grandparents' permission, took him to Kimberly's Cottage, where they interrogated this kid for over an hour. Uh, I mean, it was brutal what they did to this family in a church, walked into a church like the Gestapo. And, I mean, this should never happen in America, and that's what's happening in the Marion County Sheriff's Office. Now, that is not a blanket indictment of all the people in the Marion County Sheriff's Office. There are a lot of good men and women there who work hard, put their lives on the line daily to keep us safe and protect our quality of life. But at the top level up there, then he's a thorough house cleaning. Can I ask something based on what you just said? Yes. How does this work? A deputy goes into a church right. and takes a child, as you just yes. said. Yes. That deputy had an order from somebody. Where did that order come from? Well, they went and talked to Dan Kuhn for over an hour. The uh, the pastor, Pastor Gerald Buston, right. and his daughter, Wendy, they went and talked to pa- Dan Kuhn for over an hour, and they couldn't get anything out of Dan. All he said was, I'll pray for you. But wouldn't that order have to come from the court? Uh, no, there was no court order. There was no court. They went on the word of a known liar. There was a young man in that community who was a known liar. Everybody knew. Everybody in the community knew well, about this guy. But from the uh, from the constitutional point of view, which yes. is what you represent, yes. right? 
in order for that to be constitutional, right. wouldn't there need to be a court there order? There would need to be a court order, exactly. And I don't even think that they could take the child unless a parent or guardian were with them. I don't think that's, that's le- I don't think any judge would sanction that. But as a law enforcement officer and as the head of the law enforcement agency, right. that would be an important thing. I mean, you wouldn't want to send a deputy to pull somebody out of a church just on hearsay. Absolutely. And in fact, you wouldn't want to be making the law, you want to enforce it. And then the next day she came back and then they they were going through all the records of the school without a warrant, no warrant, and then, uh, then finally an officer came later and brought a warrant and the day before, uh, she had asked them if they could take another child and interrogate him. And Pastor Buston said, not unless I, the parents agree. And so she said, oh, well, just forget about it then. The next day, when she came in and tore up their, their, their uh, school office and everything, she said, this could have been avoided if you hadn't uh, 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 impeded this. Uh, th-. So it was a vendetta. She got mad because she couldn't get her way the day before, and she came back like a stormtrooper the next day. Wow. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable stuff. Uh, and if that's an example of, of something, that is an example of what needs to, to have the Constitution applied to it. Exactly. I mean, right there. I don't know the story. I'm just taking your word right. for it. But if there was no court order, yes. that is clearly unconstitutional. Well, and there's going to be a lot. And it might have even been co- unconstitutional if there was a court order. Uh, that's right. It was, would To take the child without their parents or grandparents? Absolutely. I don't know. And you'll be hearing about it because they're getting ready to file a lawsuit. That was two years ago? Uh, it was in 2010, March of 2010, yes. Uh, Bernie, we are out of time, but I don't want to just cut it off. Uh, If you want to have some closing statements, you're welcome to do so. Okay, thank you, Larry. Um, I thank, first of all, thank you and WOCA for this opportunity to, uh, to, you know, uh, express myself to the public, to the listening public. Um, I know that I've made mistakes in the past. Um, I know that I've been forgiven by God. I hope the community. Uh, will forgive me. I know most of the people I've met since I've lived here have have accepted me as uh, just a, a, a normal person, and I've done worked hard. I've raised five children in this community. Uh, my ex-wife and I have five beautiful children. Uh, we have pumped uh, my organization in the last seven years alone has pumped uh, about thirteen million dollars into this community. We've uh, we've helped hundreds of people get jobs. Uh, we've done a lot of good things in this community, and I hope that, uh, you know, the, the job of sheriff is a management job. It requires management skills, leadership skills, fiscal skills. I have all those things. More than anybody that the REC will pick, I have 25 years' experience in all of those things. And uh, I've run a successful organization, and I hope that's what people will consider when they decide who to vote for for Sheriff of Marion County. Yeah, well well said. And tomorrow is the date that we find out who your opponent is. Yes, it is. And from that moment on, that person is a candidate. So Yes. Well, yes. Uh, Bernie, again, it's the most interesting race I think I've ever uh, witnessed, and uh, and you're holding up well. I mean, considering yeah. everything, e- even the accusation that you were somehow behind the Dan Coon thing. I mean, yeah, that, so, that, oh that, that surfaced too. And yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. I know you're going to be on Buddy Martin's show also. When is that tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, three o'clock. Okay. So, if, if for tell your friends and family. Two things. First of all, we recorded this one. It'll be a video, and we'll put it up on Ustream and YouTube, and Robin will put it on Facebook. Excellent. So this interview is going to be there, plus Buddy Martin's show, The Voice of Ocala, tomorrow at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, okay. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you, Bernie. Thank you, uh, Larry. The pleasure was all mine. Good luck in all you do. And thank you, brother. I you're a great it. reminder that God is great. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right, we'll take uh, a little break. We're going to have fun with Joe in about 10 minutes, and we'll be back. In specialty crop news on the Southeast Agnet, well, a lot of talk lately about organics and the growth of the organic sector. And now USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service has quantified that growth with their 2011 Certified Organic Production Survey. The survey.